Abdul's Failed Food Party Written by Potri Noranya Haji Jamel Abdul was sitting on the military truck looking at the cake being stepped on by different feet. But neither was from a woman in black slippers. Red, blue, yellow, white, and finally, black slippers. He excitedly raised his gaze only to see a stranger. He disappointedly looked down and started searching again. Abdul was waiting for his mother, who went back to their stall to get the bag that contained their earnings for the day. But it had been half an hour since. Boom! Crack! The exchange of bullets had been nearing their area, so the driver decided to start the engine, causing Abdul to panic. Please, Papa, Inna is not yet here. She will be here soon, so let's wait for her, please. Abdul cried. The people in the truck looked at him in pity, but they knew they didn't have a choice but to leave. While the truck was leaving Marawi City, Abdul had his eyes glued to the narrowing street, still hoping to see his mother. But his eyes were starting to close from bearing the weight of the unfamiliar view. When he woke up, Abdul saw himself covered in a blanket and feeling the tears that dried on his face. He folded the blanket before going out of the room. He heard on the television the news announcing the war between the terrorist group and the military. Abdul, you're awake already. How are you? Bapa Ibrahim asked while watching the news. Bapa, have they found Ena? Abdul asked instead. Your Bapa Sabir and Bapa Talib went back to look for her. You can join your cousin Mahdi first. They will play outside. Abdul looked outside the window to see kids running. He nodded to his uncle and followed them. When they arrived at a compound, the kids pulled pebbles out from their pockets and shoot in the empty sky. Since it is forbidden in Islam to hurt animals, they made sure to go to a place that could cause less danger. Few people around and almost no birds they could hit. Do you want to try? Mahdi asked Abdul. Abdul only smiled and observed the pebbles falling from the sky, wanting to drop on an unknown target. He found the scene of falling amusing and terrifying at the same time. Amused by how it opposed its dictated rising motion and terrified by its impact. Abdul had enough of the scene, so he bid goodbye. He knew he was in Sagui Aran, a municipality that was about 9 kilometers away from Marawi City because he had been here a few times. When Abdul slipped his hand into his pocket, he remembered the change from the cake he had bought for his mom. The chocolate cake he excitedly ordered to surprise her. The last time they ate a cake was at their Aunt Jamila's wedding, where his mom finished almost four slices. That was also the first time he saw his mom enjoy food, so he made sure to save money for it. He went straight to the convenience store and counted how much money he had. Although he only finished third grade because of his father's death, Abdul could do basic arithmetic faster than the other kids. With only 28 pesos left, he thought of what to buy that could feed his mom when she finally came home and his uncle's family who accommodated him. After contemplating, he finally bought three packs of Lucky Me chicken noodles. He lacked two pesos, but the storekeeper was kind enough not to charge him the remaining balance. Abdul smiled and thanked the woman before leaving. It was sunset prayer, so Abdul hurried to go back home. He was hungry and couldn't wait to share the hot soup with his cousins. When he was near the house, he heard his Bapa Ibrahim fighting with his Aunt Fatima. Ramadan is coming. How are we going to feed another mouth? Aunt Fatima asked. Astaghfirullah, Fatima. How can you say that? His mother is not here. 
Bapa Ibrahim answered, That's my point. Why would his mother go back knowing how dangerous it was? Because although the bombs and bullets do not kill them, starvation will. Abdul listened outside the house and cried silently. He decided to leave again for a while to pray at the mosque when he saw his Bapa Sabir and Bapa Talib running towards his direction. Abdul followed them as they entered the house and listened silently in the corner. How's the situation there? Bapa Ibrahim asked. It's getting worse. No one can enter the city anymore. Bapa Talib answered. But the soldier gave us things they were able to retrieve. Bapa Sabir added before he looked at Abdul. Where's Nihaya? Bapa Ibrahim asked, which made Abdul attentive hearing his mother's name. Nothing. I told you we can't enter the city. What did you get then? Bapa Ibrahim raised his voice. Bapa Sabir took out a familiar bag from the cellophane. We retrieved the bag that contained their money. And this? He pulled out a black slipper with no pair. We asked the soldiers if they've seen the owner, but no one entertained us. Everyone was silent for a while before Bapa Ibrahim stood. Let us pray first, Abdul. Then we will talk again. Bapa Ibrahim assured. As everyone left the living room, Abdul took the slipper and flipped it. He saw the safety pin that his mother secured on the strap so it wouldn't be detached from the hole. He wept again after confirming that it was his mom's slipper. Inna, please, he whispered. Please come back. I brought home some food. He cried until he lost the packs of noodles from his grip and let them fall to the floor. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-lazin an'amta alayhim, ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim waladdallin. Ameen.